A very good morning to everyone or a good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, we are really happy to have you with us here. So thanks a lot for um, joining and for taking the time. Um, my name is Nico. I'm part of the customer engagement team and I'm actually here as a representative for my colleague, Robbie Watson, who is usually taking care of Harrods. And uh, while Robbie is taking a well-deserved time off, uh, I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> so. Uh, greetings to Robbie if he's watching this recording afterwards. Um, I just had a quick chat with uh, uh, Damien from, from Harrods, which you can already see in the background of the sharing screen. Uh, he just explained that Harrods did start implementing SAP Cloud Platform only 18, 18 months ago, but already has done some, uh, some project with the Cloud Platform, so like a very big e-commerce integration, for example, and you will hear some more of that in this presentation. And I can only repeat thanking you, Damien, to um, taking your time and your efforts to really contribute to this event. It's more than, than highly uh, appreciated. I just learned that uh, Damien is Irish, working for an English company, but living in Slovakia and they are drinking German beer. I think that's showing um, our, uh, our very global setup that we have in this, this uh, modern world. That's good to see. And I actually don't want to waste more of your time, Damien. Uh, I would love to uh, hand over to you and I'm very, interesting, uh, I'm very in, uh, interested what, what you can share with us in your journey uh, that Harrods had with SAP Cloud Platform. Yeah, super. Thank you, uh, Nicholas. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction. <laughs> yeah, so hi, everyone. Um, my name is Damien, I'm the uh, integration lead at Harrods and um, I'm here to tell you guys, hopefully give you a good insight on uh, delivering that speed with SAP Cloud Platform, integration suite at Harrods. Okay, so, so that's basically, I'll just run through the deck. Um, firstly, give you an idea of what we're gonna go through. So we start off with a little bit about Harrods, uh, who we are and what we do. Um, why, why the need for a cloud platform, and specifically um, integration on the cloud, why indeed we chose SAP. We'll go into a little bit about um, our project approaches, how we delivered, how we set up our teams to, to make sure we delivered successfully. And then we'll wrap it up with um, a little bit about um, some lessons we learned in the projects um, and the implementation and uh, what we're planning to do in the future. So looking ahead um, in Harrods with, um, with, with integration. Okay, so um, who are we? Um, Harrods is, um, is uh, probably best known for its um, iconic uh, department store located in um, central London. Um, that, that's basically the, the store everybody saw on the previous slide. Um, we um, we, we were the largest department store actually in, in, in Europe, um, covering 1 million square feet um, across seven floors with 330 departments. Um, for anyone that's ever visited Harrods in Knightsbridge, um, that, that, that they're probably aware of the experience. Um, it's, 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 it's a day out to visit Harrods and um, even I who've worked there for a number of years um, can still uh, wander around Harrods in awe of the interior and the and the various things on offer there. So, like like uh, I guess like many many stores, um, we we've been closed during this current COVID nineteen pandemic. But um, prior to that, we've had um, eight consecutive years of profit uh, growth um, with the annual revenue of um, in the region of two billion two billion pounds. So um, Harrods uh, in Knightsbridge is, is, um, is very high in the tourist destination list. It's, it's the third most visited um, tourist attraction in London. Um, we get um, over 65 million visitors per year. Um, that can equate to um, over 100,000 people entering the doors on, um, on a good day, probably around Christmas time. Um, so that, that, that's a lot of footfall. Um, that, that passes through and customers that are taken care of within the, the Knightsbridge store. 
So also just to mention, um, like I did, I guess, with, uh, with Nicholas prior, prior to starting the presentation here is um, Harrods is uh, probably a bit more than, 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 um, than uh, people are aware of perhaps. There's also um, Harrods Estates, um, Harrods Aviation, there are parts of the Harrods brand. Um, and also recently we opened um, an outlet store in Westfield Shopping Centre and also initiatives like the Harrods Cafe where, where, um, where discerning customers can pre-order garments, try them on in our cafes. So there's a lot of innovation. It's a very traditional store, but lots of innovation also happening within Harrods and the Harrods brand. The store itself is, uh, is, is also going through a major transition where there's um, um, over 200 million being spent on the uplift of the interior. Um, yeah, we'll take, we'll take a look at um, some of the slides around the interiors in, 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 in the next couple of minutes, just to give you a view of that. But uh, just to continue on the theme of who we are, um, the customer is really king in Harrods. Um, of course, they're, they're the heart of our success. So, um, um, in fact, the, the motto for Harrods is Omnia Omnibus Ubique in, in Latin. <laughs> and that means uh, all things for all people everywhere. And uh, just to drive home that point, we can see um, what probably stands out a little bit more is the helicopter on the right that's been gift wrapped. And um, yeah, like I explained to Nicholas earlier, that's, that's not a photoshopped image. Somebody actually ordered that in Harrods. And um, actually, yeah, the, we, we fulfilled that order. So we all should think big, yeah? don't think too small. If you have any wishes for the next Christmas, think That's big. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, Nicholas. Put it on the list. It can only be rejected. <laughs> That's to say, aim for the top, but prepare for the drop. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so just a little bit more on who we are for, for, for anybody, just to give them a little bit of a, a visual on some of the departments within the store. On the left here, we have Shoe Heaven. Um, we're stocking, stocking all the, um, the, the, the brands from Prada, et cetera. Um, fine Jewelry, just a little representation here, the Cartier um, store within Harrods. On the right are the, are the food halls. Um, the food halls are based on the ground floor in Harrods and they're, they're um, and very ebullient atmosphere in the food halls with lots of people. Um, um, browsing and walking around with lots of um, lots of good food food on offer there so that's just to give you an idea of um, some of the departments and atmosphere within Harrods a little bit about me um, as mentioned my name is Damien O'Dowd um, I've been at Harrods some um, four years in um, September I think during that time there's, there's been there's been a lot of change um, um, the, 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 the IT infrastructure has um, evolved a lot. Um, that, that's across integration and many other areas as well. Um, so there's, there's, there's been an initiative in the last um, two, two years, uh, primarily, to look at the um, technical debt within the landscape and readdress a lot of that. So as part of that, we started to look at um, Cloud First strategy, and working with best of breed partners in um, areas such as uh, HR, e-commerce, um, and, and in the future CRM. So like, um, like other areas within integration, we, we started to look at our state um, and um, started to um, build out our integration platforms to be um, in line with the, um, with the initiatives. So me personally, I'm, I'm responsible for all things integration within Harrods. Um, you know, that includes um, any of the architecture, the business as usual, and um, many of the projects we're, we're, we're currently um, working on. Okay, so uh, why the need for SAP Cloud Platform? So in order perhaps to explain a little bit about that, we'll take a look at um, what was our existing infrastructure. Um, so initially, when I joined Harrods, um, like, like I guess many people, I, I, I would have thought it's, it's, it's just a single store. Um, how much integration could there be? 
<laughs> but when I arrived, um, you know, there was, um, there, was, there was much more than I expected. Um, and there was many projects in flight. Um, this is, this is a, the SAP um, PO slash PI uh, landscape that um, was in play a couple of years ago. We had, um, we had many integrations, um, but both, both as part of our documented integration landscape, but also many point-to-point -point integrations that, that, um, that pre-existed um, prior to that. We're processing up to 3 million transactions um, per week. Um, this was running on a single PO instance. Um, the key point being it was, it was actually non-resilient. Um, as mentioned, some point-to-point -point integrations outside of the PO landscape. Um, so we can probably ascertain from this diagram, might be difficult to see, but um, we, we get the general idea. Um, you know, there was just a lot of integrations across a lot of different protocols um, from, from REST, lots of SFTP. We made use of uh, SAP PO JMS um, as well as um, there was another JMS provider because um, uh, MQ series because we were working with some IBM components, um, HTTP. There was a lot of JDBC connections to um, MS SQL databases. Um, but generally, the, the, the key point being that this, this uh, integration platform was, was business critical. Um, we, were, we were taking past transactions from um, point of sales terminals from the store and from airports, um, ma making it critical. Um, as well as that, the customer journey on the e-commerce platform was um, real-time dependent on the, the, the PO infrastructure. Uh, and by that, I mean, um, there, was, there was synchronous calls going through the platform um, that, were, that, that, that were required to allow the customer to check out. <clears throat> so because of that, it gave us very little time to, to take down the system for, for patching and maintenance. As mentioned, it was um, it's a, a single PI instance um, just just load balanced internally across two nodes, um, so architecturally it wasn't um, it wasn't fit for purpose to allow us to um, maintain service um, while um, while while patching the system. So there came a point um, based on based on uh, the project pipeline um, as to what we did with this platform. So there were two options, of course, or maybe more, but two options that. Uh, we considered, and that was either building out the uh, in-house infrastructure or look to uh, use um, some iPaaS solutions and basically move to the cloud um, for, uh, for our integration uh, platform. Okay, so um, we'll move on to the next slide, which is um, just, it just breaks it up before we go into what solution we actually came up with. So this was, um, this was the, the challenge set down by our IT director um, who, have, who had um, a lot of grand visions for um, IT and infrastructure within Harrods. Um, he, um, he, he himself, of course, had the challenge of um, bring, bringing the infrastructure up to date, up to speed, um, allowing us to um, move forward. Um, and, and, and by that, I mean move forward in our e-commerce and our HR areas. Um, etc to allow us to improve the technologies and um, allow us to to, to be agile um, when integrating with third parties okay so this this uh, uh, diagram will give you um, a representation of um, what we moved to which was basically a hybrid um, a hybrid setup for integration so we still maintained our SAP PO on premise which is um, which is on the right of uh, the, the, the diagram here. But um, we um, started to build out our SAP Cloud platform, which consisted of um, an API management layer um, and our SAP Cloud platform integration. And there's probably a few other things that we've, we've um, included since this diagram, like BRM. Um, we've used some HANA services as part of the integration layer. Um, 
So, but do, do you, this generally represents the two key components in the API management and the cloud platform integration. On the left of the diagram, we see some of the, um, the partners we've, um, we've um, integrated with. Um, yeah, bearing in mind it's, it's not so long ago we, we started on this voyage, but um, we've, we've managed to integrate with Workday in our HR area, IBM Watson, which is used in customer campaigning, Fresh Service and Zendesk, which is used for um, service management, um, a key one, which is Farfetch. So in, 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 in recent months, um, um, Harrods have gone live with a, with a quite, quite a big initiative. Um, so that, that's um, Farfetch uh, partnership, where they look after our e-commerce infrastructure, basically um, with the front ends and the order management system. And uh, we have a lot of integrations uh, between Farfetch and ourselves, um, you know, from, from all the fulfillment process, um, order creation, dispatch, delivery, document printing. Um, we expose some um, APIs to Farfetch, um, for example, create order, um, uh, send documents, etc. cetera. Um, we do that through our API management layer back into our cloud platform. Uh, integration for any orchestration and uh, through SAP Cloud Connector into our back-end um, back systems. So that was um, uh, quite a massive project actually um, and um, well perhaps to say quite a brave project from, from Harrods and um, you know not, not, not many department stores in, in our view have, um, have managed to achieve that in such a short space of time. Um, so yeah, that was quite an exciting project. Last one listed is a JDA. Um, that's for all our um, replenishment. We have a number of probably high volume integrations going through CPI to integrate with um, JDA. So hopefully that gives a picture of some of the scope of the work we've, we've done in the last, um, last couple of years, 18 months or so. Um, just some points I've written down on that. Um, so, yeah, just with the, with the cloud first IT, IT strategy, uh, most of these um, components on the left are in the cloud, um, cloud-based solutions. Um, that's not to say we're exclusively cloud-based, but um, um, yeah, there's this, 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 this been a large adoption of cloud technologies. Okay. So um, just to mention a standardization, um, the adoption of an API management layer allowed us to standardize the entry points um, into Harrods, keeping it consistent. Um, for example, create order is the same for Farfetch or any other partner that we, that we choose, to, choose to work with for, um, for, for order creation, et cetera. So um, I had one point here on the leverage of existing content. So, you know, it was quite a big move for us to, um, um, I wouldn't say move away completely from SAP PO, but um, we had a large amount of content developed in the ESR. Um, so we, we, we still maintain our ESR content and um, use it for mappings, et cetera, within the cloud platform integration suite. So that, um, that, that was uh, beneficial to us. Okay, so just a continuing um, on the subject, um, um, just a little bit more deep dive perhaps. Um, yeah, point here I'd, I had documented was um, one of the challenges um, we, we probably received at the time was um, why another integration layer? Um, you know, we have SAP PO, um, why, why do we need to look at um, having PO plus PI? Um, yeah, so for, for us in integration, the way we saw it is um, it's, it was actually empowering us to, um, to um, offer more services. So say, for example, our API management layer would have been um, very difficult to do through SAP PO. We'd have to be exposing REST endpoints and uh, opening firewalls to allow us to do that. With API management, we can do that in a consistent standard way. Um, allowing us to integrate with companies like um, uh, Farfetch and IBM. Um, for example, uh, tokenization through um, OAuth authentication 
we can do that all standard, pretty standard, out of the box um, through our API management layer. So we, we felt it was actually, um, well, to use, to use an English phrase, horses for courses, to allow us um, to, to do on-premise to on-premise, on-premise to cloud and cloud to cloud, to be able to offer various different services that way. Okay, so a, a quick mention here on catching errors. So a lot of our time in, um, in, in the world of SAPPO was spent um, investigating messaging problems, um, alerts um, with data that had come into the system. Um, with API management, we wanted to address some of those, um, well, to, to reduce some of the time we looked at um, investigating errors in, 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 in PO message monitor. So we did a lot of validation, schema validation on the API management layer, um, which would throw back to client um, calling applications. If there was any um, schema validations that failed, that to catch the errors up front, so as to speak, rather than let them come down into back-end business systems. So that was um, one of our key considerations. Um, design patterns. Um, I, I think quite a big change in, in, in CPI is it uses um, standard design patterns like um, scatter, gather, pub, sub, request, reply. Um, so that, that was, um, well, I guess quite a change from the, the, the days of PO, which was very company specific. By company specific, I guess I mean um, SAP specific, um, where you learned how to do your service interfaces, message mappings, et cetera. But, um, I guess uh, CPI was fitting into more of the world of um, <clears throat> standard design patterns, um, uh, as mentioned. Okay, so just a, I guess, a repeat of the reuse of the leverage in the ESR content, <clears throat> which allowed us to reuse all of our service interfaces that we had um, previously developed. Okay, so a little bit of um, <clears throat> a deep dive on our uh, API management layer. So one of the key um, considerations for us was, um, yeah, how to standardize approaches into API calls. Um, yeah, and, and security. So we had full security review at the time um, from security teams within Harrods. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we, we just give a view of um, some of those um, some of those um, restrictions, validations we did, et cetera. So we can restrict IP addresses to allow only specific IPs agreed with them, agreed with our, our partners. Um, credentials, we, we, we validate through auth authentication where we can generate a bearer token, uh, provided to, um, provide to um, the partners we're working with. So each one would have their own set of credentials. Um, we can check for, for, for attacks such as a spike arrest. Um, we, can, we can allow specific number of calls per partner. So all of that um, gave us great flexibility um, within the API management layer to um, standardize approaches and how APIs were called. Um, it also, of course, gives us the opportunity to do our own add-ons and one of those we probably see there is through, um, through logging messages through specific um, um, JavaScript plugins. Okay, so that, um, that gives an idea of some of this, the, um, the implementation approaches we've done on the API management layer. Similarly, <clears throat> in the CPI layer, um, we tried to use some standard approaches um, as mentioned, we use a lot of the, um, the um, standard uh, integration patterns, request reply, um, uh, message split, etc. cetera. Um, on this layer, I think um, we're, we're, we're probably approaching close to 200 iFlows we've, we've developed <clears throat> in the last um, um, year to two years. <clears throat> So the team is very well up to speed on these um, design patterns and approaches. Um, I don't think, well, I don't think SAP are doing anything new in that implementation, but it's, it's good to see them aligning with them, with the standard approaches. Um, and I just make reference to the enterprise integration patterns um, 
I guess the Bible you call it for that. Um, so this this was um, a new approach for us in Harrods and how we implemented in line with this, um, coming from a SAT PO background. <clears throat> So just to mention point two here, there was a lot of pre-built functionality, um, you know, around um, data encryption, a lot of um, nodes that we could reuse for JSON to XML conversion, made building the flows, um, um, well, I wouldn't say easy, but um, <clears throat> we, liked, um, we liked a lot of this um, pre-built functionality that allows us to get up to speed um, very quickly. Um, perhaps things that would have been quite challenging to do within, within SAP PO. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so likewise, uh, point three, we mentioned a lot of the, the, the approaches, the protocols. Um, um, so similar to PO, we, we, we had a lot of uh, options for integration um, with REST. Um, so we've, we've, we've used a lot of JMS through enterprise service messaging. Um, that's been, um, very useful and heavily used component for us, um, as well as standard um, adapters such as um, FTP, SFTP, and HTTP. Okay, so that gives um, gives you a little bit of um, a viewpoint um, um, of, the, of um, some of the. Well, this is quite a simple flow, perhaps, but um, um, just highlight some of the, the pre-built functionality. And on the left here. Um, we also have used um, open connectors a little um, for integration with Fresh Service and Zendesk, um, generally in the service management area. Okay, so we detail a little bit about um, why indeed we chose SAP. Um, that this this wasn't a given for us, um, you know, as part of due diligence, it was um, required that we. Um, Review other vendors, um, but um, you know, obviously, <clears throat> being an SAP customer for 20 years or so, um, we we're, we're running in-house systems on um, EWM, ERP, um, BW, all SAP systems, all business critical systems. Um, we have an um, uh, established relationship, a very good relationship prior to um, prior to CPI with with SAP. <clears throat> so um, that was definitely one of the um, the, the, the pros in, in, in deciding CPI. Um, the team experience too, of course, um, coming from um, a POPI um, um, integration. <coughs> Sorry, everybody, <laughs> you have a bit of a frog in my throat. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, the team experience um, coming from PIPO. Um, we, we expected probably a leaner learning curve moving to um, CPI, um, but not exclusively PO or PI. I mean, um, the team is small, but quite experienced, um, you know, technically very adept. Um, as, as part of due diligence, we did look at other vendors, but, um, you know, we, we, we didn't find any significant gaps. Um, you know, and in some cases, uh, for sure, SAP was, was stronger, especially around areas of um, integrating through proxy, as, as, as you all might have guessed. Um, okay, yeah, so this brings us on to the point for market comparisons. Um, you know, to, to be frank, there were some concerns raised early days about uh, stability of the, um, and, and maybe even functionality. Um, for 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 any of you who've been around as long as I have, um, you'll you'll probably remember um, HCI, um, you know, and had been mentioned to us as part of the the the, the design phase as the stability of HCI. But um, we put a lot of effort into reviewing data centers, reviewing uptimes, um, as well, of course, as um, reviewing the the the. the the, the, the functionality of the product itself. So uh, SAP support, um, you know, um, you know go, probably going back to the, the, the first point of the established relationship, um, you know, we're, we're very well versed of how to engage with SAP. Um, we, we have an opinion on how, um, how quick the response times are through OSS and how we're supported through um, 
and customer engagement. Um, <clears throat> for us, um, we, we just got a good feeling um, with when we started to engage with SAP on the um, on the, the the customer engagement. Um, I mentioned Robbie here, who's um, who was introduced probably uh, by by um, Nicholas at the start of this. But um, you know, we we've had um, probably gone from strength to strength, I would say, over the last two years in terms of um, from early days to understanding basically what is a tenant, what's a sub account. And that was all um, very new to us um, right through to now where we can, we can probably um, converse with the, with the, with the guys in SAP um, on a, on a detailed level. Um, and um, yeah, the key point is that we do, we do get that opportunity. Um, we've had a lot of in-depth calls and products and, the product's functionality and what's in the pipeline, roads, maps, voice of the customer. Um, when we started out in the beginning, there was, um, there was bi-weekly calls with um, subject matter expert. And um, that, that gave us um, a good level of assurance that um, everything we were doing in terms of development was on track and in line with best practice. So um, yeah, we, we, we had a lot of support from SAP on that. Continuous improvement. <clears throat> I probably um, touched on the point just now, but um, we can see that the product is, is constantly evolving. Um, lots of new features um, um, coming all the time. We get patching cycles um, bi-weekly. Um, <clears throat> you know, for us, that's, that's a whole, a whole new world um, coming from SAP PO when, um, when um, um, well, we found it ex extremely difficult to get downtime for the system. We, we had to um, analyze what patches we could go to, what um, large amounts of regression testing, et cetera, to do any upgrades. With the cloud platform, we, we were getting continuous improvements um, <clears throat> bi-weekly on the product. And um, I think from what we've seen from the roadmap, um, it's, it's, it's continually evolving, um, yeah, which is, which is where we want to be because, um, as mentioned, we use a lot of um, functionality in the integration suite, and um, yeah, we like the opportunity to use <clears throat> use new stuff. Okay, so some of the project approaches we used, um, <clears throat> just to give people a bit of an insight into um, into our team and how we managed. Um, I think the diagram we went through initially showed a lot of um, projects um, that we managed to implement. Of course, that, that also included the, the, the cloud platform, the API management itself. Um, that, that, that itself was, was, was a big project. Um, so the, the in-house team consisted um, only of um, four integration developers, um, myself and, um, myself and uh, th three others. Um, so we, we, we did supplement the team. <clears throat> we worked with a small consultancy through vision. Um, somebody I, I personal experience of working with in the past. Um, so that supplemented our team by, um, by, by three further individuals. <clears throat> um, you know, that that's a total number of seven people who, 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 who have, um, implemented the cloud platform and, um, delivered on that, the, the, the 200 or so iFlows, um, you know, that's, that's right through from architecture to requirements gathering to implementation. Um, so I just call out here some of the, the, um, the, the scope, which I've probably gone through in lots of detail already. The main pressures, um, so the, the learning curve and um, the design patterns, how we do things. <clears throat> As mentioned, we did have a lot of support from SAP. Um, on that. Um, it probably wasn't like teaching us how to do it. It was more so validating our approaches. Um, you know, as, as mentioned, quite a lot of um, technical knowledge there, but just, just guidance we needed. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we split resources, assigned them appropriately to strength. Um, myself and one other focused, I guess, on the architecture how we planned our tenants, how we configured our SAP cloud connector to connect to on-premise systems, um, some of the approaches to um, naming conventions um, and, and, um, and development approaches. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's um, that's a little bit of um, an insight into the team size and uh, what we managed to achieve in that uh, space of time. Okay, so um, some of the lessons learned here, um, um, development and methods. Um, I, I hope I'm not rambling on too much. Um, I, I, I'll take any Q and A's at the end. I should have perhaps mentioned that at the first, at the, at the start. Um, but um, maybe, maybe if um, I finish a little bit earlier, uh, we, we, we can take time for, for that, of course. Okay. You so already I'm, have some uh, entries in the Q and A, so we can we can do it later. So the, <clears> okay. it seems to be working now. <laughs> okay, super, Nicholas. Yeah, people yeah. aren't asleep yet. Then no, okay, no, no, great. they are there. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Um, development approaches. Um, yeah, so we mentioned um, uh, moving from traditional. Um, we call it traditional at this stage, of course, but of course, PO is still evolving as well. Um, and part of our plan is to transition and uplift our on-premise system from 7.4 to 7.5. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're already doing that as well. Um, but um, there was definitely a learning curve and that included myself um, from, from um, PO implementation to um, CPI implementations. Um, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's, that, that, that's almost a given as all of you know, but um, there was other areas where we, we needed to understand around logging and tracing, payload search. Um, and th these are something that were critical to the business as part of the PO platform. So say for example, um, we were asked to track an order with the user defined search in SAP PI, that was very easy for us. Um, that wasn't available out of the box from, well, at least from our understanding in the beginning, how we do that in CPI, we needed to figure out and um, I guess bridge the gap on which, which would probably be considered non-functional requirements. Um, likewise for logging and tracing, everything was traced in, and message replay was all out of the box with SAP PO. Um, we, had to, um, we had to look at CPI and how we could implement these. But um, yeah, I think at this stage it's, it's we have bridged that gap clearly, and um, we um, <clears throat> we um, we're, we're we're comfortable with them, the implementation for logging, tracing, etc. So um, for 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 us, um, as it transpired, of course, and may, may be obvious for for many people on the call who have who have, who have more of an architecture background, um, it's there's, there's more than integration just to consider. Um, you know, there were many points. Um, um, so how, how many tenants do we need? You know, the, the, the consumption model, subscription or consumption to understand the licensing, the costings, you know, how we were charged uh, for, for based on number of connections, how we integrate to on-premise systems and how we architect the, the um, SAP Cloud Connector. Um, which, which we did through a master and a shadow to allow we have um, resilience built into the platform. Um, so yeah, resilience and, 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 and RTO, RPO were, were, were key for us in, the, in this whole, um, whole journey. Um, you know, obviously we were getting the inbuilt resilience from the cloud platform itself, which brought us from a PO landscape that was non-resilient. Um, to a to highly resilient, highly scalable platform, but there was that um, that that consideration for the cloud uh, connector as well. Um, so yeah, there was there was there was a much wider understanding than just how do we how do we migrate from PO to PI or how do we build a build an iFlow to get us from system A to system B. There was there was there was the whole um, architecture and um, the whole um, um, the whole end-to-end -end picture, um, including service management. Yeah, which, I'm, which brings us on to that point here, um, the service management and um, the high availability, the disaster recovery, um, the SLAs that um, SAP um, and as part of the, the, the contractuals. Um, so all of that needed to be understood before, um, before we could, um, well, in fact, even make a decision to move to the cloud. So another area um, 
you know, that was, that was un, unclear in the beginning, let's say, was um, the roles. Um, you know, we have a traditional basis team. Um, we have an integration team. We have SAP application team. You know, that's all very well defined um, in, the, in the world of SAP. We've, we've all been on SAP projects, I guess. And um, I guess and we all clear on what our roles were within that project. But moving to the cloud, there was... Um, you know, we needed to consider, um, you know, who's going to fulfill what role. Um, so it was um, quite a transition for, for, for primarily, I would say, for basis and for integration. Um, you know, for things such as um, credit consumption, who's going to manage that, um, service activation. So we needed to um, define within our organization um, um, the roles and um, responsibilities. We did that through a, through a RACI in our high-level design documents. Um, so that, that was another challenge or lesson worth mentioning. Okay, so looking ahead, um, this, this is probably the last slide. Um, so just, just to give a, give a little bit of a viewpoint on what we've got in the, in the pipeline. Um, we've we've, we've uh, got um, lots of projects. It's, it's probably non-stop is, is the term to use. Um, you know, given the success of our e-commerce integration, we're looking at further leveraging um, product information on, on the e-commerce side where um, um, articles that are published um, and updated in SAP are replicated through, um, through CPI. Um, um, we're going to implement a publish subscribe model there to um, to connect to the um, the hosted PIM solution, we're going to expand them um, through um, brand direct um, brand partnerships with 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 um, with, um, with other luxury retailers, and um, that that's in the pipeline also. Um, Hampers is a big part of the Harrods business. Um, yeah, so it's hard to believe, but fast approaching. September we go live with them um, selling Christmas hampers and hampers, um, which is big part of the business in, in Harrods. Anyone that's ever received a Harrods hamper are lucky enough to receive one. Um, it's, it's, it's part of our brand and um, gets, um, gets uh, the Harrods brand out there. Also looking at the CRM space, um, customer single view. Um, you know, just to, just to recap that the customer is very important in Harrods and um, we have a very um, strong loyalty program. But um, currently, the infrastructure there is based on a lot of legacy platforms. We're looking at we're looking at, um, we're looking at um, um, basically modernizing that, which will include a lot of integrations um, in and out of uh, cloud platform integration. Um, yeah, so technically, um, I just mentioned we're, we're, we recently considered looking to Cloud Foundry. Um, you know, that's that's um, that's we had the opportunity to speak to. Uh, the product owners at SAP and, and, and what's in the roadmap for Cloud Foundry. And we're currently hosted in Frankfurt and Neo. We have no immediate need, but, um, um, but um, <clears throat> based on, based on um, a lot of new innovation happening in Cloud Foundry, we've, we, we've investigated that as well. So I think uh, that takes us to the end, uh, Nicholas, everybody. Um, yeah, um, maybe back to you, Nicholas. I don't know. We'll start to look at some of the Q and A's, or yeah, <clears throat> we should do that. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time and for the very nice presentation. I found it very uh, interesting, to be honest. Uh, one question coming from me: uh, What's a hamper? <laughs> Sorry, Nicholas. Yeah, a hamper. I don't know if it, if it's a very uh, English thing, but. Um, but it's it's like a it's like a, a basket full of um, full of um, Harrods uh, food beverages and um, and such things. Sounds nice. So it's a tradition at Christmas that uh, people send hampers as as gifts. Um, but um, you know, within Harrods, it's um, it's 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 not just me to you. Um, corporate customers might uh, order five hundred, one thousand hampers. Um, okay, to, send, to send to a lot of corporate clients and um, and um, I think um, the Harrods hampers are, are probably pretty famous for for being for being you know the the best you can get basically okay 
and what do I have to achieve to be on that list from Harrods to receive a Harrods hamper? Is it enough to be a nice host in an online session or is there anything else that needs to be done? Well, we'll have to pick that one up later, Nicholas. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> no worries. Um, if you like, I mean, we can, we can have a look at some of the questions and then later on we can, we can do a little bit of the poll. Um, I think one, one question that might be quite obvious is um, what are the plans to move from Neo to Cloud Foundry? You have spent some words on it already. Is there something more you can you, you can share with us already? Are there any plans, any timeframes maybe? Yeah. Um, so, you know, as part of the due diligence before moving to cl cloud platform at all, um, we, we, we reviewed a lot of the status page.io to see the uptimes and the various different um, data centers. So we, we, we specifically picked Frankfurt at that time. And um, um, so, um, you know, for, well, I think basically, Nicholas, uh, that the reason we looked at um, Cloud Foundry is because of the infrastructure and the resilience. And um, we, we understood that um, Cloud Foundry offered um, um, site to site resilience that wasn't available on, uh, on Frankfurt, which meant a minimum downtime um, of, of, of 20 to 30 minutes if there was any issues. Um, <clears throat> but um, but uh, you know, just just to explain a bit of context in that, because the CPI is critical within within Harrods. So everything mm -hmm. in the warehouse, if somebody puts something into a box in in the warehouse, they'll scan the barcode. It'll get the document okay. wow. back through a synchronous call from our partner. Um, mm -hmm. Any disruption, um, minutes disruption, impacts the the, the the supply chain basically. So anything we can do to minimise any downtimes. Um, and Touchwood, you know, Frankfurt has been stable, but um, we, we, um, we, anything to minimize any downtimes, we, we, we try and achieve that. And um, mm. we understood that Cloud Foundry was a more resilient infrastructure than Neo, but um, we had discussions with the, with the guys uh, around that. And um, well, basically the, um, the bottom line is they're similar with additional resilience coming in Q4 this year. But mm. we did learn from that session that there's... Um, you know, Cloud Foundry offers the integration suite as a whole. There's, there's a difference in, um, in the licensing models, et cetera. And generally, the, um, a lot of the newer stuff does seem to be going to Cloud Foundry. We don't have any particular timelines or pressing needs for doing that, but um, mm. we're, keeping, we're, keeping our eye, um, we're keeping our eye on that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, another question that might be quite similar is, do you have an, a a feeling already how much of your content can be reused with that migration from near to cloud uh, uh, foundry or not yet? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have in-depth knowledge on this, of course, but um, yeah, from our discussions, it, um, there are tools and, and, and facilities to help in the migration. <clears throat> you know, there's a po po even Postman uh, collections for anybody that's familiar with a Postman um, tool, there's Postman collections to, to, uh, to allow that migration. Um, mm. I think the key thing for us, uh, Nicholas, is that, um, you know, it's, it's not only a technical migration, of course, it's business cutover and um, uh, regression testing and all of that. And given that we've so many projects um, in flight at the moment, um, we, we don't have any specific timelines, but um, there's, yeah. there's definitely tools there to help. Cool. That's, that's good to hear. Thanks. Um, maybe I can combine two questions. The one is, um, can you give maybe some insights about your account setup? How, how many global and sub accounts you have? And then another question is, uh, how many talents do you have, which is the same, I guess, and how do you manage transports between them? Um, if that's the Dave Bennett, I know I'd say hi, to Dave. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got, um, we got, um, <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, so, um, well, uh, yeah, we, we, we well, th these were all part of the learning curve for us as well. We had a development tenant, I, I guess the standard is Dev QA in production. Um, so for, for, for production, we, we, um, we ended up creating two tenants because it allowed us to ring fence um, 
the second tenant for for the far fetch integration alone um, that that gave us um, quite a lot more flexibility and um, I guess the cost of a tenant per month is isn't that great I think it's like 600 euros per month um, but um, you know, offset that gave us the flexibility to just just do specific e-commerce stuff in that tenant. Um, transports, yeah, we set up uh, transports through CTS Plus. Um, that allows us to transport at a package level um, rather than an object level, which is, is key. So, for example, all our uh, distribution management stuff, which might have been 40 iFlows, was um, within one package, and we... We, we, we released that as a single transport. Um, now, um, it, it do, doesn't give us a lot of flexibility in, in, in BAU fixing. Um, so you update one iFlow, then you need to transport the whole package again. Um, but we have ways of working around that by just, just creating a separate package and moving the iFlow in and out. It's, it's well, it's not exactly a workaround, but um, I do know for sure that uh, it's, it's in the pipeline uh, from speaking to Udo and um, the, the, the guys in the product management mm. that um, there, there, there will be an opportunity to, um, to uh, well, it's in, it's in the pipeline basically to move at high flow level. Um, you know, and using CTS Plus, it is pretty, pretty standard approach that, that, that probably many people here on the call have um, Used for releasing or transports, importing into the new tenant, and that's all done by basis. Okay. Cool. Thanks for sharing all the insights. That's pretty interesting. Uh, you just used the abbreviation BAU again. What yeah, that? that's a biz business as usual, uh, Nicholas. For us, ah. so you know that that's any tickets we get for um, you know issues or incidents that we need to look into, or or stuff that we do day to day. Mm, cool. Thanks a lot. We can take one last question and I will try to combine two as, as well. Uh, one question is how long did it take your team to create the 200 iFlows? And the other question is which team is developing the iFlows? Is it internally, externally? Are you doing it on, on your own? Yeah. Um, how long did it take is, um, um, well, I guess um, over, over, over 18 months, two years. Um, you know, we're, we're deploying stuff to production okay. all the time, uh, week on week. Um, you know, that was, that's all done by our internal team, um, plus two, two to three uh, ex externals. Um, you know, I mentioned, um, mentioned a, a, a company, a small company we work with that, that um, um, provided us with um, two to three um, um, contractors. Um, so yeah, just, just the, 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 the seven, eight of us, um, um, have developed all those iFlows as well as set up and, 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 wow. and running the cloud platform integration suite. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Good job. Uh, well, very well yeah. done now. Yeah, we, well, I, I mean, think, I think the point being Nicholas, that it was, it was, while well, it was key for me as, um, as lead that to have people that I, I knew and could deliver. Um, mm. you know, we, we have pr our previous history with most people on the team, of course, and, um, you know, we kept the team small, but highly expertise, I think is, is, is the point. Um, cool. yeah. yeah. Small, but mighty. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I like, I like the way okay. you put it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. I mean, thanks again uh, for sharing all the insights and all the internals as um, as well, I'm sure that helps quite a lot of our other our, um, our other customers to benefit from your learnings. So. Yeah, thanks a lot. Super. But with that, yes. we are at the end of the hour um, almost. I would like to ask the audience to give us one minute of your time. Uh, we created a little poll, obviously. So uh, kick off that poll. It will take less than one minute, I think, uh, if you're not a very slow reader. Uh, it would be great if you could give us some insight how we can improve this um, format for you in the future. And with that, there's not much more for me to say than thank you all. Thanks again, Damien. Um, thanks. Uh, we have multiple sessions uh, over the next days. We will share again the agenda on LinkedIn, but you also have the link to our webinar page where you can sign up for the other sessions. So make sure you, you assign some of you 
sign up for some of them and can join some of them. I bet they will be also pretty interesting. With that, I'm wishing you all a very nice Tuesday. I hope the weather is as nice as it is here in Southwest Germany. Um, and I wish you all the best. Yes, thank you everyone. Thanks, Nicholas. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.